All right, so for, t for this project, I'm going to use some super beautiful 9, 10 ounce uh, Weaver Select English Bridle. And this is uh, the rich brown color. <clears throat> 9, 10 ounce just means um, it's a measuring system for leather. I, I prefer 9, 10 ounce for all my axe leather. It's, it's, it's very heavy duty, it'll last a lifetime. You, don't, you wanna kinda stay away from thinner leathers. They're not as heavy duty, they won't hold up as long. Uh, be a little flimsy. Eight, nine ounce, <clears throat> nine, 10 ounce, something like that. Works perfect for axe leather. Nine, 10 ounce is probably just a, a touch thick, but it's worth it. Um, I use English bridle for several reasons. One, it's pre-dyed. So this dye is uh, permanent. It's not gonna bleed, it's not gonna run off, it's not gonna fade. It's um, permanent and it's what they call stuck, struck through, meaning the color goes all the way through the, the leather. Um, English Bridal has certain waxes and tallows already in it to um, help protect the leather from weather. Uh, we're making an axe sheath. Obviously, it's something that's going to be in the elements, so you get the added protection that's already there and then if you add a, t a coat of Obanoffs or some any kind of leather protector it's it's really really good holds up to the elements really well so I used I use this for almost everything I, I, I love the color and I, I love the versatility of this leather um, now if you want to dye your own leather you can it is a cheaper option obviously you can buy uh, regular veg tan leather uh, a little less than English bridal, but then you have to dye it yourself. And uh, I'll maybe I'll do a video on dyeing leather at a later date. I typically don't dye anything unless it's um, not made from English bridal. But this stuff's a little bit expensive. But if you're going to do some leather projects for yourself, um, buy a hide. It's gonna it's gonna be costly. I'm not sure what they run right now, but buy a hide. And it'll last you a lifetime. It doesn't wear out. It doesn't um, spoil as long as you keep it clean and dry. And, you know, out of the elements, it'll be ready for your use uh, 50 years from now. So <laughs> just buy a big sheet of it. So, um, so on our pattern here, we need to keep in mind a couple things. It's, it's probably not a bad idea to write outside. On your pattern so that when you're cutting it out you know where to uh, to lay out your which which way to orientate your your pattern so <clears throat> when I'm cutting I'm just kind of looking for some clean leather um, we, you want to utilize as much as the leather as possible so I'm gonna stay back from this edge right here because this is the finished edge from when they tanned it it get, tends to get a little stiff right there so I'm going to put this thing right about there. I know there's there's no major scratches or defects anywhere in this section. So I'll get my handy dandy weight here. I'll set that down and then I'll grab a pen. Um, don't worry about putting pen marks on your leather here. We'll, we'll lose that later on. Try not to slip off your pattern though. So it's pretty basic. Trace out your pattern onto your leather. So we got our pattern all traced out. I'm just going to do a quick square cut here. Oh, I need to change that blade. Ooh. Now that I've got this in a more manageable piece, I'm going to, you know what I'm going to do real quick is I'm going to change the blade in this knife. Um, use razor blades like they're free and you won't have any problem cutting leather. So let me get that changed out and we'll get right back to this. All right, now we got a fresh blade in there. We're going to go ahead and cut this out to my lines.
Now if you were real worried about wasting leather, you'd want to be um, a lot more precise than what I'm being. Hopefully you guys can see that. Don't worry about being completely on the line. We'll sand all this true later. down there. Okay, I'll just fix all that later. Alright, so there we have the outside, backside, and flap of our sheath. Now, we need to make a front side. So one way of doing that is to just fold over your uh, pattern here. And then trace this out and cut it. Now, this top edge is going to have to get trimmed down a bit after we um, after we cut this out. Another thing you could do is take this pattern here, fold over the flap, and put a piece of vanilla, manila paper in there, <laughs> just like this. I'll, sh I'll just do it. Take your take your pattern, put it on a straight edge, fold over the fold over the lid or the flap. Trace this out. There's more than one way to skin a cat. Cut this out. Best you can. Doesn't have to be perfect. We'll make it perfect later. Now we have the front side. Let's see, this top edge is going to have to go. So, one way we could do this. Kind of eyeball. Kind of eyeball it. Cut a little bit off at a time. That'll get us close enough to get our pattern made and then we can adjust it again here in a minute. So we'll lay this out. You can mark this outside. Front. Lay your pattern out. Trace it. Oh.
we have our basic sheet. Now, I can already tell that the top of this is still too tall. So I'm going to take a little bit more off. guesstimate see what our fit looks like not too bad let's take it a little bit more off yet and then I don't like I don't like pointy ends like this so what I probably want to do right here is kind of give it a little Flattening, and then I'll clean that up with a uh, grinder or something. I think that's going to be close enough. Yeah, I like that. All right. So... Now, I'll clean all this up and I'll get back to you. Okay, so this detail right here, I wanna clean up before I get too carried away. Now you could do this by hand, you could cut that better, or you could get some sort of uh, sandpaper and a dowel, but I wanna make this a nice um, curve there. So I'm just gonna use my variable speed burnisher that has a sander on one end. I just want to basically make that a, a smooth curve. That looks pretty good. It's hard to tell on camera because of the burr, but we'll clean that up in a minute. The next thing we need to do is make a welt for our sheath. And that, as I talked about in the pattern, that's, that's a half inch section of leather there that is going to protect our stitches inside of our sheath. So you could do this a couple different ways you could lay your sheath out trace the pattern and then cut it a half inch within that pattern or you could do it the easy way get yourself a strap cutter set it to a half inch cut out your welt and this will bend to your sheath so it looks like I got plenty there I'm just gonna kind of lay this out and eyeball it give it a little snip right about here lay that out make sure it's gonna reach and it does and that's our that's our welt it's that simple <clears throat> so let me get all this situated and then I'll show you how to lay out for your welt and we'll glue the weld in.